today I'm going to be talking to you about a very special book. Now the book is called Coyote Soundbite. Coyote Soundbite is written by John Agard and the reason why it's so special is because it's a book that teaches us to care for our planet and our planet as you know is very special to us. Um, this book is going to be coming out on April the 22nd which is actually Earth Day. Now Earth Day is a day where we celebrate our Earth, we celebrate um, nature and plants and all things that are integral to our, our planet which make up our health, our living and the reason why we need to celebrate it is because we need to learn to care for it, we need to take care of it um, because if we don't then it would deteriorate, it would be destroyed eventually over time. It teaches young children to be conscious um, of our planet and uh, understand why it's important to us. Lantana is proud to be part of this ethical journey um, and we produce um, eco-friendly books, we use non-toxic ink, um, we use sustainable FSC certified paper um, that doesn't harm the planet and so we're really really taking um, part in this journey to look after our planet and look after um, all things around us so that the, the planet can last a lot longer for, for children, generations to come. Um, and this book looks at this quite serious topic in a very fun and exciting way um, where we have the main character who uh, quite comically uh, dresses up and goes to a conference to talk about um, how we can protect our planet and um, how we can make it a better place for everyone to live. Next up we've actually got John Agar reading an extract of his amazing book. Merging from her calabash of ebony, Odudua said, she keep it short and sweet. All she wished was to jolt human memory. Let them go ask the tree of sixteen branches from whose flesh grew the first cola nut. When first humans toddled on their butt, imagining first humans toddling on their butt did make coyote give a little grin, a laugh out loud would be embarrassing. Next came the earth goddess Kujum Chantu, who spoke of wonders of which legends told, legends passed on to the young from the old, how our eyes grew into the sun and moon, how her bones became hills, how her breast became what's known today as Mount Everest, but most marvellous of all her telling was how Kujum Chantu's own belly fat became home ground for first humans to squat. Although the conference day had been sunny, the next speaker wore fur boots and fur coat with leather trimmings down to her knees. She was, of course, from the land of permafrost, where folk were used to the igloo for a home. She introduced herself as Earth Goddess, Ninam. Forgive me, my friends, if I, Ninam, shed a tear. I grieve for the polar bear, my iceberg rider, for the walrus, my toot-walking seahorse. When the human doing destroys their feeding grounds, when their home, sweet home ice, is no more. I ask, can my beloved creatures survive for long? Next to speak was Bridget, keeper of the wells, whose waters spring from the womb of earth, a daughter of Moon Mother, 
Bridget tends the fire for the storytellers word weaving but with their forest hideouts disappearing the fairy people are up and leaving next up we've got Pete Wobbler the illustrator of the book showing you a lovely art activity Hello, my name is Pete Wobbler I'm the illustrator of Quixote Soundbite a book written by John Agard in this book we have the Earth Goddesses and they decide to hold a conference and invite all the female animals to attend it and so they can talk about the state of the Earth, especially nature, especially the forests. And I thought, why not, um, let's make an activity of it. Let's make a forest. Let's create a poster and I'll show you how to do it. We could have based it on the end papers that I've made for the book. As you can see, it's a forest. And if you do it on thin paper, you could also use it as gift wrap. Let me show you how to do it. These are the materials that we're going to use. You need a pair of scissors, a piece of card that is fairly firm but not too hard. You, you should be able to cut it without too much trouble. A kitchen sponge that you could snip into small pieces like that. Ink pad like these. They could be bought at any art shop or stationery shop. You don't need more than four, I would say. I chose greens and blues because we are going to make a forest. And then a couple of pastels or coloring pencils. And then, of course, we need a large sheet of paper. This one is A3 in size. OK, I'm going to show you how to make a stencil. As you can see, I've made some stencils. I'm going to show you how to make a tree. Take the card, fold it in half, roughly draw a tree, or half a tree actually. If you don't want to get confused, you can draw it like that. Make a tree trunk, that is the foliage, it's a round shape. Then you just fold it, and don't bother about the, the other side, you actually do, just need one side, because it will be a mirror image. Okay, then you cut it, like that, not too close and then the tree trunk. Don't stress about it too much. It need not be precise. We can always make it beautiful afterwards if you think you've made a mistake. Okay, let's start with this color, the dark green. And I'm going to do, I think, these leafy, this leafy plant, I'm going to do like that. Always rub the ink from the top because if you're not careful, you might just bend those sharp edges. So I'm going to make several of them. Don't worry too much if you make a slight mess. As you can see, I messed up a little bit there because I was not careful. I went over the light edges there. That is no problem. Not to worry about that. Okay. You can see it goes quite quickly. You can make a few sheets in one hour out too much trouble and once you've made your stencils you could use use them time and again okay now I take a different sponge for a different color of ink immediately close it if not it will dry out okay then I'm gonna make that little piece of foliage a lovely turquoise like that You don't need to measure it out, you just look and see where there's an empty spot and you think, yes, this color needs to go there. And you'll get the hang of, hang of it very quickly. Okay. Then I'm going to use that light green. Now this shape I call the fern. A new piece of sponge for that. there and there and over here another one there and then of course we should use our new stencil the tree that we've made 
I'm going to use this color for that. Okay, this is quite a large tree. There's enough space there, I think. So you just dab it onto the pad like that. Okay, this is a big tree. So I can't make too many of them. But there's space there. I should have started actually with a big one, I think. Did you see I did not finish the entire stem or a branch, a trunk rather, because it's behind those plants now. Okay, I'm gonna make one more here. Okay, I think that is fine. I'm going to show you something else as well. Do you see that small piece of um, the razor that I cut like that? You could also make grasses like that. You can practically use anything. Well, sort of anything, more or less anything, to make a stamp with. This tree here, of course, needs its trunk. So I'm using a black pastel. And I roughly draw the branches on top of that. They dry quite quickly, these um, stenciled areas. So you can draw on top of them almost immediately. I don't finish that entire trunk because it's behind the foliage of that tree. Okay, perhaps I can take this. Do you see it's just three very easy moves and there you have a fern. Where you ever see a, wherever you see a gap, you just make another one. Okay, but you know what? Now I think we need a bird or two. Look closely, it's quite easy to make a bird. I use a simple shape like that and like that. So then I do this to make its wings. And then I use the black make its eye, its feet, and a long tail. I'm going to make one more, so I'm going to use that shape yet again. A long tail, the wings like that. I like that and the legs like that and you can carry on you can fill the entire page with birds what do you think I think that is quite attractive if you work with pastels just remember afterwards to fix it you can just use ordinary hairspray spray it and that will prevent the, the, the pastels from smudging too much there we are I think it's a beautiful lovely poster give it to someone you love